let's ask Sebastian Page. He's the chief investment officer for T. Rowe Price. Back with us at Post 9, and you are the reluctant bear no more. I knew this was going to happen. I just didn't know when. Why did it happen now? Scott, we bought stocks. We closed our underweight. It wasn't a large underweight. It mm -hmm. was a little less than a percent. On October 27th, when the S&P went to 4,100, down 10 percent, with sentiment indicators down by one standard deviation. I told you I'm waiting for a pullback for a better price. And these are large portfolios. We bought about $3 billion worth of stock, and we were done by Monday. Average execution price, 4135 And we're now neutral, fully neutral between stocks and bonds. We have some interesting positioning under the hood still, however. Okay, so you bought $3 billion worth of stocks. Can you give us an idea of the types of stocks you did buy? So for us, we went diversified. We are neutral between value and growth. We are overweight, small and mid caps. And uh, that's interesting because, yes, you know, it the, is interesting. The S&P equal weighted is flat to down a percent year to date. Your magnificent seven is up 92 percent. So we think there's an opportunity to get more diversified in stocks over the next six to 12 months. So that was part of the positioning we went into. But I mean, if you're overweight, small and mid, you must be in the soft landing camp then. You know, I think soft landing is the base case. You have to balance two things right now. And it's actually, you know, we're going back and forth with all the narratives. The narrative changed last week, right? And the week before it was different. It's like narrative ping pong. But it comes down to the fact that growth has been surprising on the upside mm -hmm. significantly, which you and I have talked about, versus the fact that there are long and variable lags to a higher cost of borrowing. And that is something to worry about. I mean, the narrative may have changed a little bit, but the risks have not really. You still have the risk of higher for longer. Some would say, you know, inflation's sticky. It's going to take a while for it to take that next major leg down to firmly put the Fed on the sidelines. Some would suggest valuation's still too rich. How do you address the risks that you still see? I worry about three main risks. Rates. Definitely, there's still upside risk for rates. I agree with you, Scott. Inflation, maybe the base case is that we continue to normalize, but the risk is to the upside. Oil prices down. The market is sort of calming, but the risk is to the upside on inflation. And the third, you mentioned it, is valuations. You know, overall, the market is reasonably valued. But compared to bonds, stocks are more expensive than they were before this whole, uh, you know, the sell off of 2022 and where we are now. So, you know, the equity risk premium is most compressed it's been in 20 years. You don't use the equity risk premium to allocate tactically, but it's still one of the top three risks. Cash yields are higher than earnings yield on stocks. Okay.